Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Hollywood Breaks. This week, we welcome the writer of the Wake Up newsletter, Sean McNulty, as we dive into Elon Musk finally getting the keys to the kingdom. The bird is free indeed. We also discuss the leadership changes at DC and dive into what cord cutting really means for the future of this business. So welcome to this episode of Hollywood Breaks. Oh, good Fuck to have that. you back on, Sean. I appreciate you. Uh, yeah, right. no, of course. It's unfortunate today is not a very big news day. You know, there's no divorces happening. Got nothing to talk happening. about. Happening. No big flops in the box office. It's going to be such a slow episode. I don't know what we're going to talk about. It's like end of summer. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, uh, Keith and I were talking before you jumped on about the whole Twitter thing the Elon Musk walking in with a sink in his hand just to uh, basically clean things up. It's classic Elon Musk kind of move. Um, but it's interesting that, you know, at one point we have Twitter under a battle of ownership, you know, what's going to happen. Clearly some, some things that are going to change in the media landscape and that side. And then just some of the um, cable members that are coming out and the, and the information happening with users and, and um, fans of that case. So like, I find like our, our landscape is once again changing, you know, maybe it is just into summer, but our landscape is just changing once again of like where people are gonna go, what they're gonna pay attention to, where they're gonna get the new sources and, and many things like that. A lot of things shifting. Uh, it's the middle of earnings season for a quarter, third quarter, which is why all of this news is coming out uh, in this yeah. kind of <laughs> fire hose <laughs> at a time where everybody chooses these these two weeks to kind of really put it all out there. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, Twitter's, I mean, yeah, Elon in the sink, you know, I, I joked in the, the newsletter this morning, uh, you know, I'd love to see the thought process on like, yeah, I should bring the sink, right? Yeah, I don't, oh yeah, totally bring the sink. That's going to play well, man. Yeah, or like so, picking uh, out the sink. Even. Right, yeah. Like, I was thinking like, what assistant you know? went and bought a kitchen sink? <laughs> yes, yeah, right. He did not, yeah, exactly. That was not- He wasn't job. going into Home Depot. <laughs> right, right. And no, no, it's too big. No, no, I need it. No, I need it. No, get the good sink. Not that's, you know, like, you know, like what, what was that process like of, you know, yeah. clearly it wasn't uh, improv comedy. No. Um, but, you know, yeah, Twitter- Look, it's a private company now too, which is you know we're not we're not going to get any more numbers out of Twitter mm. really uh, in an official every quarter kind of thing. So that's one big shift that'll kind of happen. Um, you know, he come he came in, he fired the CEO, the CFO, the top two legal people. First thing you're out. Um, you know, when he told everybody the rumor or the rumor, but word around was he was going to lay off 75% of the staff. He kind of came in and said, that's, I don't know if he said that's not true or not, but it certainly was like, well, maybe, you know, don't believe everything you read kind of thing. But uh, that, you know, we've all been at companies, at Keith, certainly where yeah. not to this scale per se, but when new management comes in and you're, you know, and this is a very extreme case of that, but mm -hmm. uh, working at Twitter right now is not something I, I would envy of, of anybody, mm -hmm. unfortunately. No. Yeah. But it, and just the, uh, kind of sh the influence that they've had for so many years, really of sending out um, and people being able to use that as a platform to send out their message, gather people, promote things, what have you. It'd be curious to find out if he's really gonna clean up all these bots, what that really means for us in a media landscape of like, are we gonna see changes and kind of relevant um, more information? Is it going to be a platform that people will use the same way? Or I, I also kind of curious if people will just run away. If, if Elon Musk owns it, will there be people deplatforming and saying, that's not where I want to go? Well, I mean, it's interesting because there's all, all be, there's all been all this data because of, obviously because of the sale, a lot of stuff was made public because of the run up to the trial. And we we're getting all this information that we didn't normally, wouldn't normally have access to necessarily. And it was like, I think something like 10% of Twitter users are the most active and drive most of the discourse and the news cycle. And, and I would say a vast majority of those come from the more left side of the aisle versus the right. So, it, it, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how that all changes because on the left side, they all hate him. On the right side, they all love him. So it'll be interesting to see like how that, that all shifts now. And then there's also a study that was actually in... Um, uh tgif which is um barry weiss's newsletter and um they she had uh her wife nelly bowles writes this tgif newsletter which is great and she had charts that sort of saying where people are getting their news and tiktok is now one of the top sites for news 
which is also owned by a somewhat not entirely friendly foreign power. Right. So that kind of that kind of makes it very interesting, sort of, and just Elon coming in to Twitter. And I think there's a lot of people who are like, okay, well, let's see what happens now, because he was very clear in his letter to advertisers, which I think was released yesterday or earlier today, that he's like, listen, I recognize that this is a town square, everyone needs to have a voice, but it's not going to be a free for all. A lot of things are going to stay the same, but some things are going to change. And we'll see. I, I don't think advertisers are 100% convinced that that's the case. Um, and just from a sort of content marketing standpoint, I mean, so many people use Twitter, as you mentioned earlier, Tim, as sort of like a resource to market themselves. Um, and now that I don't know if that's going to change. I mean, who knows? I mean, there's, it's and as Sean pointed out, it's private now. And that's another big thing. Like yeah. we're not going to get a peek into the under the hood as much as we used to. And they're not going to be as beholden to some of those sort of SEC rules that affect a lot of the other public traded publicly traded companies so i think there's a lot of things that are going to change and um you know it'll be interesting for sure yeah and i think you know there's going to be you know what was funny he made so elon put out this big uh, open letter there's a letter to advertisers you know yeah. and none of the stuff he's been talking about for the past five months was in it and yeah. it's like oh what happened on the talk about bots and I, he was just very much want to maintain public you know discourse and all this very positive right. you know and like oh right when you get to the keys of the company, all of a sudden your perspective changes a little bit, doesn't it? And uh, so, you know, yes. it's one thing to talk crap from the outside and it's be that yeah. guy coming in and then he's, you know, made this offer and whatever, you know, and whatever it was. And now, yeah, now we, now his, his financial, I mean, Tesla's his core of his business, but it's 54, you know, whatever the billions of dollars it is yeah. out of all of his money, but he has a lot of investor money from Morgan Stanley and things like that. And he's got a lot more responsibility on it now. So his language, 100% changed and we'll, we'll be getting these random angry, angry tweets, you know, on the platform anymore or not. And, you know, it's a lot of questions there. We'll see. It's an ongoing saga. I don't, you know, there's not too much. Anybody knows more than anything else about Elon Musk. So, you know, uh, we should see. value it. of the platform to like, basically let's say, let's keep it within our industry for a, just for the sake of argument, but like what's the value of the platform. Do you think it's something that can be converted and changed to a video platform or a streaming platform that might be in a very primary kind of ugly way of thinking of it. Or is it, um, is it really the value in the, on the marketing side where you can promote and gather users and followers, or is it really clearly about a village voice and just saying, Hey, the value is there are no filters. There's no gateways. There's no sensors, you know, say what you want. Yeah, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I think the key to your point and the thing I read as well was, you know, the top, you know, 90% uh, of tweets are sent by 10% of the users, you know, yeah, yeah. Twitter's, Twitter has this outsized presence given to it versus its influence. Uh, it is not a video platform that's been tried several times. It is not a, even, you know, the spaces things going on with, you know, uh, with live, you know, the clubhouse uh, model, whatever you want to call it. I don't know that I've heard that's a real big success. They've had Twitter blue, the subscription product, you know, they don't, you know, if they, Twitter's been around for a long time. If they would have figured out how to make money on it, they would have by now. You know, they make right. some money, but what's the key to Twitter? It just is what it is. It was never created with anything else in mind. It was just created as this, oh, this is a cool thing I can do. Right. Let's see if this, happened. and it took off and it had a lot of, you know, momentum in the Arab Spring and it had a lot of momentum going on. And those these world events became that way, but the world's not like that anymore. And now it's a primarily a, a news platform for people for there's a lot of journalists on there of all yeah. ilk and a lot of anger and a lot of, you know, whatever it is, but celebrities now don't as much uh, go on there to make their announcements. They'll do it on Instagram. They do videos They you know, but Twitter's not the platform that they used to do, which was right. in the late, you know, 2010s, maybe like, Oh, somebody tweeted out this thing. And once Trump left, certainly that was a whole other, you know, chapter marker for them. So sure. what, yeah, yeah, Tim's a good, it's a good question. Uh, you know, what is the growth pattern here? Twitter, you know, Elon made a lot of big noise about what he can grow that platform to be. It's nowhere, you know, it's not even as big as Snapchat. I mean, the, the, the user numbers aren't even there, you know, so yeah. the size is it's compared to snap or even, you know, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok is nowhere near any of those platforms in terms of users and influence in that sense so i feel yeah. like it's just like buying a newspaper in a way yeah that, i mean that, that's that's actually <laughs> a really Washington great Post. Yeah. yeah it's a great analogy it, it it is very much just like sean said it's a lot of journalists use it um politicians use it it's used often for a lot of hot takes 
after certain events and he's right a lot of celebrities don't really use it they use more like instagram studios will use it to sort of promote like when you first open the app there's usually something or an app will pop up in the middle when you're scrolling that's sort of promoting an upcoming film so that's just a part of like the broader digital marketing plan just to be everywhere where everybody is i don't think necessarily twitter gets an oversized influence versus a tiktok or an instagram in fact if you look at most surveys for the younger generations their twitter is sort of down way well, down it's more, every poll it, i see it's, it's yeah never, it's more tiktok yeah. and snap and even some stand instagram but instagram is becoming more and more sort of an older generation uh tool Amazing. and tiktok and snap or whatever like 28 you know. like if you're yeah. 28 to 30 that's an older generation we need to get right to the well, next. Yeah, exactly <laughs> that's the next phase so i don't know we'll see i mean you know i i i think it feels a lot like a newspaper but you know much you know there's there much like rupert Mur murdoch still believes in his newspapers there will be somebody who will always believe in twitter you remember so just it, in the yeah. days where the big corporations wanted people to, to become addicted to cigarettes, something so basic, and now it's like addicted to any media platform. The next media platform is when we need to get that generation hooked on yeah. so we can have years and years and years of growth. Reduce the churn. <laughs> Reduce the churn. Give me a high yeah. ARPU. That's all I want. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what's still around? Terrestrial radio. So, you know, they're like yes. this platform, you know, so <laughs> the roles change, but things don't go away. And Twitter right. might have had its moment in the sun. And, you know, we'll see if it can be grown again. But uh, will it go away? You know, that's a, a larger business question. But right. will it become all of a sudden this major growth engine of the, has it become the no. new hot social media platform? No, you know, no. that's not in the future. So, yeah, he's got a lot to figure out. Might be a good um segue there just to talk about two other platforms that are changing because it does feel like we're getting more and more information and i think sean this is the stuff you've been covering is just like the cord cutter world of like cable is also changing the way the bundles happened and it, truly we can imagine channels disappearing off of some uh some cable services where and for the for all of our lifetime, it's just been growing and growing and growing. I think we've hit the maximum, but now people are debundling, getting away. And I'm going to guess the recession slash inflation that's happening to us is part of that decision of if I have to pay for a gallon of milk or my cable of something I don't really watch, I'm I'm dropping that and watching sports on Hulu. Yeah, and now you also have the virtual bundle. If you want to, if you want the bundle, you can get Hulu Plus Live TV or YouTube TV. You know, you don't even have to have that cable box and the, you know that experience of cable, which I don't think anybody really enjoys that either. Yeah. Um, if you do want to have that bundle, you want to have it for four months for NHL season or whatever it might be, and I don't want it the rest of the year to watch my ESPN, whatever it might be. But yeah, that you know, so the, you know, Comcast and now they lost another five hundred and forty thousand uh, cable TV subscribers in the third quarter. It's in three months. They are now down over one point five million this year, and the year isn't even over yet. Uh, they lost the uh, one point four million in twenty twenty. I think it was like one point six or seven in twenty twenty one. This will probably be well over two million by the time fourth was, quarter comes around. What's the revenue loss on one and a half million? Well, yeah. the question is, what's your margin loss? And that's just it, where how much money is Comcast making on a video package anymore? Because they get, you know, every every year you're, you know, uh, so essentially, you know, uh, they have to pay cable, each cable network, the right to carry. So they gave 10 cents a subscriber, whatever it might be, your ESPN, it's $8.25 a subscriber. So those rates keep going up. The more it goes up, either they pass it on a higher cable bill to you or they have to eat the cost. So, you know, the margins there have gotten squeezed over the years. So how much money is that gone? Sure, revenue wise, but how much profitability is gone for them? Eh, they're a broadband company They're That's where they make their money, you know, in that sense. But the problem is, you know, the broadband subscribers are also flatlining, which is a different story. But yeah, sure. the thing is, you know, it's just where these cable networks revenue has been built on. It's, the, it's been, you know, the best media business model of all time. I get paid from Comcast, Charter, you know, whoever gives my cable, uh, gives you your cable as a consumer. And I also get to sell advertising. So I get the double dip on it the large but now your advertiser base from what you're advertising to is dwindling because of cord cutting so if before you had 85 million households have your cable tv and now it's 70 that's a 50 million people that you cannot sell ads to anymore on your cable right. channel so that's right. less revenue for the cable network and then that's also 15 million homes that i'm not being paid for that i was being paid for five ten years ago so the revenue for the cable network business is just going down and streaming is not really making that up and these numbers 
you know, the Comcast earnings call, which I listened to this week, you know, they were asked about the video, you know, the trends in the video business. And will this, you know, they really hadn't, usually the cable business were like, yeah, we're going to try this bundle. Or they try to make some creative answer up, whether it's going to work or not. They were just like, yeah, these trends aren't going to change. And that's you like know. the sports um, leagues are also going to suffer from this, right? Because they're basically baseball, football, basketball, all those are bundled. They get a lot of revenue from the from the networks carrying them. If the networks don't have the revenue, don't have the viewers, those packages and those those offers are going to not be the same. Um, yeah, the NBA is the real next canary in the coal mine because there's one they're the next league with the deal up the nfl set for another 10 years uh baseball isn't really neither here nor there and hockey right. has a has set a new deal as well so the nba deal is it's up in 2025 but it's gonna be renegotiated you know probably by next year will be the when the new deals will be set and that's really the thing uh does the nba stick with the bundle which is t they're heavily tnt and, and espn split yeah. right now with some right. you know network uh, uh, you know games as well yeah. but you know, the thing that's interesting that's popping up is the, the, the LA Clippers this year launched a D to C streaming service for pretty much for 72 of their 82 games. LA, you know, it's, it's geo targeted. So it's only LA, you know, sure. general, right, almost like local, local network, local television used to do it's Carrie as yeah. you were, yeah. if you were in New York city, the yes network, whatever local our you know, regional sports network, they call RSN, you know, whatever that yeah. would be. If, regional and, sports yeah. Exactly. So that's in Valley sports networks, which, bought the old Fox sports networks. They also launched the DTC product for $20 a month. So this is what's, is this going to be either future, our team's yeah. going to start offering their things or will these local RSNs be streaming only and really be able to get, if you want to watch the Rangers, you want to watch the, you know, Chicago bulls and you want to pay, you know, $200 for the season here's your option and don't worry about cable. And that's where the bundle really, yeah, you're right, Tim. That's that, yeah. once that starts, maybe you know, the NFL's already, you know, the, the Amazon deal this year is that's the first toe in the water of that. Yeah. Uh, we're streaming only for at least one franchise. Um, but you know, uh, ESPN will be the thing that the thing that everybody, you know, waits for in terms of putting actual real games and not just the out of market hockey games on there uh, to stream, which now it doesn't have a lot of value, but yeah. Yeah, so interesting. What a, an evolution. I remember when the, this is going to be relevant, I promise, but <laughs> I have to warn you guys when I say this, but the when Weather Channel was purchased, um, one, of the, one of the big parts and big values of that deal for the buyer um, was all the fact that all the local weather networks bundled into it. So you can imagine this almost playing itself out the same way with sports because weather and sports, traffic and politics, right? Those are the things that are always need to be live and local. Um, so that idea of like, well, the local sports networks also having a big national conglomerate somehow um, and the play of like, oh, how do we bundle teams, bundle cities together and create a, a, maybe a brand new network, brand new type of network we haven't seen before. Um, it'll be pretty interesting to see how the evolution takes place because there's a lot of money in sports, a lot of followers, a lot of loyalty to the team. So you have a built-in audience um, when you're doing that. Yeah, and the thing about the, the local things too is that you know all cities are not the same size. So right. the Kansas City team doesn't have as you know the LA can get a lot more money for a streaming service. The the Kansas City market, you know, the reason why they bundle together for sports rights is to you know everybody gets an equal cut of the pie. So when the NBA deal goes through every team, whether you are, you know, a smaller market to New Orleans, you know, Pelicans, or whether you're the LA Lakers, you're getting the same amount from the yeah. TNT deal, ESPN deal. So these local things that pop up, if they're going to take away from that, you can't, because that's the real check that they get for the, for the rights. It's even this, these local streaming things that they take off are not going to meaningful, you know, you're talking 60, 70, maybe a hundred million a year where the NBA check's going to be like 275, 300 million a year. So, you know, a lot of math to figure out that was protected in this bundle for a long time, Tim. And we're going to see a lot of experimentation. Uh, there's going to be no like, oh, this is the one way to do it for this, this sport. It's going to be a lot of uh, mixed packages that way. And, you know, the Yankees and Cowboys are valued for a certain reason, you know, much more than other clubs are in the world. So uh never a dull moment in the never the, the eagles game. right keith Don't. Philly, man. i don't care about the eagles man go steelers come on give me a break <laughs> but i don't hate the eagles i'll root for them when they're not playing the steelers how's that yeah, the phillies are doing pretty good you're not doing yeah, the phillies, yeah. game one tonight baby 803 yeah, yeah yeah 
first pitch. You're wearing your red today. You don't, didn't really. See. No, I know. I'm probably going to get eviscerated for that too. I've been getting eviscerated for my um, choice of clothing when I go to certain events and I'm not decked out in Philly red that I get <laughs> attacked. <laughs> Certain so anyway, events. all right. Yeah, enough. certain events. Yes, exactly. Some they don't really give; they could care less. But some I do get attacked. So we'll see. Anyway, yeah, but um, I agree with you. I mean, it's it, it's interesting because I, my thing that keeps popping up in my head is you said mentioned the uh, the whole Amazon thing, and it, I wonder because it doesn't seem like everyone's been overly wow. Now, granted, it's a Thursday night game, so in the Thursday night game ratings have never been spectacular. But I'm wondering if if everyone feels like this, it, if it's, it's going to be viewed as a success because we had the Amazon numbers that came out yesterday and they weren't exactly spectacular. Um, but I think everyone's sort of expecting that given the, where the economy is supposedly headed in 2023, that, you know, earnings are going to just not be great for the next few quarters. But at the same time, it, I mean, they did rave about it and how it, you know, drove some subs and whatnot, but I don't know. I just feel like the numbers aren't that impressive. I mean, and again, it could be because Thursday night football and it's not Sunday, but maybe that'll be the real test. Will it be real test? Will you, if, you know, and if CBS or Fox or it should happen to lose some of their Sunday night game or Sunday games, then that'll be the real test about whether or not streaming is actually the future. Yeah. And they, you know, they open big and as you said, Keith, you know, the, the live, by live by the sword, die by the sword of, of right. a fr- uh, franchises. What who's playing, you know, when, yeah, it's, exactly. uh, <laughs> when it's Denver, you know, and two games to two weeks in a row with no touchdowns. It's like, right. I don't care what network you're on, you know, <laughs> no but, one's watching that game. <laughs> that's not a good investment. Um, yeah. And they opened, you know, roughly to, again, these are Nielsen numbers, you know, right. 12, 13 million there. The last game was 7.8 or eight, you know, 8 million. So you're down on right. you know 40% from opening week. Uh, and again, you know, but for them, it's also driving like, you know, I mean, I, I love NFL and I watch every week and, you know, it's an amazing promotional vehicle for all their products that they just don't have, you know, so yeah, whether that's that true. Be yeah. ring cameras to the peripheral, the new season to, you know, Judd, um, uh, Jack Ryan's news that tra- you know, the trailer dropped last night. So they do that, yeah. you know, and they sell advertising so they can also make revenue back. They're not just, you know, promoting themselves. So there is a, a fly, you know, the, the new wheel, word of the 2020s, the new flywheel where, okay, maybe it's a little bit of loss leader here and we're doing this, but it's a nice way to promote X, Y, and Z to an audience that we would never, ever, we have to spend millions of dollars to go reach elsewhere on and buy that $800,000 slot on Fox NFL, you know, which we don't yeah. have to pay for now. Right. So there are some other things to it. Um, but, you know, they're also learning that I think, you know, there's a big ad push in September, early September, Lord of the Rings football. And it's like, yeah. maybe they need to do another, Hey, we're still here. Cause people dropped off and you have your media habits and new shows come on. And now you have world series coming in last week's game had a, the Yankees Houston, you know, LCS competition going on. So you know, maybe there's more of a push to it. They just, they just signed uh, LeBron James to do an, uh, a Manning cast uh, starting on November 17th with his uh, show, The Shop, that he does with his producing partners and they'll have oh, special yeah, yeah. guests on. So they're, you know, and, and to, they said this from the start saying, we're launching this, we're going to grow, this will grow in what we're doing. So this is only phase one. So, you know, right. I can benefit of the doubt, certainly, <laughs> uh, but also at Amazon, Keith, you know, they're shipping, this is, this is line, 16 on the you know, know exactly. on, on, the, on the excel sheet this is not yeah, like oh my not, god it's not this high on the, on the on the uh yeah the, the chart i get it yeah you know and that's sure. the thing too tim at these conference calls you know uh these uh, earnings calls you know comcast you know it's like peacock and all these numbers and like they spend about 30 seconds on peacock they are a cable company or in a broadband company <laughs> and arguably a theme park company and a movie company before they are a streaming business company, you know? So sure. whereas Netflix it's job one and Disney, you're probably job two or three, right. you know, we're about discovery HBO max. It's roughly top three jobs. So, you know, it just depends on what company you're talking about. And it's, it's not as fun to discuss because you want to put everything head to head, but there are, there is a lot of nuance here between, you know, and then Apple T Apple, didn't even mention it in their own prepared remark at apple tv yeah, yeah. plus in the room they don't really them, do it i mean apple yeah they like, don't really do much with it <laughs> you know they don't they break nothing out you know it's no. 900 900 million subscriptions and i'm like that includes like people who pay for podcast subscriptions like you know it's like it's yeah. not you know and like literally like it's the most useless number in the world because it's all under services which is podcasts music ga- you know arcade yeah. games so you know it's really hard to get we all want this kind of old 
ABC, CBS, Fox, you know, kind of battle. Thursday night battle who won. And it's like, well, it's a little, it's not as much, it's not as much fun as it used to be, Tim. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. To put a, no, it's, so <laughs> it's not as apples to apples as it used to be. Yeah, the media the world has changed so much. It's incredible to think of what a big player Amazon is in the media space. But on media, on their books, it's like, well, yeah, it's one of the top 20 things we sure, do. Sure, it's great. Emmy nominations are awesome. Thanks for Yeah, asking. it's like, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the recognition. Some vice president of vice presidency uh, got, a, got a deal or whatever off of that. But yeah, it's so, you know, it's funny from one perspective, when you're in this part of the industry, it's a very valuable thing and a very valuable deal and a very valuable relationship. But inside of the some of these motherships, it's like, oh, oh yeah, TV. We kind of we do that with our video game subscriptions and podcast subscriptions. We're like, wow, that's yeah. not. But what, Apple's also raising their prices for Apple TV Plus and for Apple Music. So you know mm-hmm. there is a there's this kind of open checkbook era. Uh, is and all of media is kind of you know coming to an end with just interest rate, the economy and so on and so forth. So it's even interesting that Apple TV Plus, do you think, just has endless will to spend on this stuff it's like oh you're raising prices then by you know by 40 percent it's just two bucks a month but it's like okay that's a decent spend you know that you're kind of asking people to pay for this now don't so. they have to pay off oprah they probably have to raise our rates <laughs> <or they're- laughs> yeah that's, that's, that's the ted so lasso well. bill probably but yeah it's probably- it's, it's, yeah <laughs> season three it's, that just se- keeps well, spending and more and more money <laughs> in season four if you want season four you know somewhere yeah. a little uh, that, yeah right exactly. well, i mean so. they produce they better start doing it <laughs> yeah um, Keith, I read your newsletter this week. The, oh, yeah, yeah. Diving into the whole DC world and what the yes. um, Black Adam's going to mean. Do you think there's a? Do you think Dwayne Johnson? This is the question. Do you think Dwayne Johnson really is saving the DC universe here? <laughs> Come on, is he really the Superman? Uh, of Superman here? Well, you know, he, you know, I, I get he's the, he's the the master promoter, so of course he's going to say. Um, Black Adam was a hit, and you know, listen. He as really far is as, a brilliant uh, promoter. He's a brilliant. he is he is he's a great self promoter. He knows how to promote himself, and you know, the opening for it was okay. You know, they met the number, like that's okay, great. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they it holds this weekend. I'll be curious to see if it does a sixty percent plus tumble, which I probably think it will. Um, but as far as, you know, this is what I talked a little bit about the newsletter, you know, I'm not as bullish on this, uh, James Gunn, Peter Safran announcement as I think most people are, um, um, for a few reasons. One, I I don't think the co-president thing ever works, um, because you divide and you divide jobs like that. And just in my experience, one always leaks over into the other, like, you know, everyone can say, well, James Gunn's going to be creative. He's not going to care about the business side. He will care about it when it starts affecting his creative. And that's when it's going to get interesting. And, and you can't tell me a producer like Peter Safran. It's going to be like, okay, I'm out. He can handle the creative. I'll just focus on the business. Bullshit. Not going to happen. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. And, uh, you know, that's one. The other thing is, I- I'm not sure any high-end director is going to want another director sort of leaning over their shoulder, which is essentially what we're looking at here with James Gunn, who's an actual, who's a director, who's done mostly comic book movies. So there's a level of street cred that he has that's important. But the sheen is coming off comic book movies. And yeah, we all talked about this ad nauseum. So they have to raise their game. Mimicking Marvel is not going to be enough anymore. They have to raise their game. And that may involve bringing in a high-end director. And I don't know a high-end director who's going to want another director breathing down their neck. So we'll see. I mean, I'm willing to eat crow if it does work. Um, We'll see. You know, I I just, I don't know what to see, like what exactly their plans are. Um, You know, Henry Cavill coming back as Superman got a lot of good press for them. Um, You know, it's interesting. I also think another component of this is I don't think Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi just want to wash their hands of DC completely. Um, I think they were somewhat involved in bringing in Peter Safran and James Gunn into the, the picture. And I don't think they want to let go. And I think the original plan was DC was going to operate as a separate unit from Warner Brothers. And I don't think Pam and DeLuca necessarily want to let that go. So with this team in place, they still have a, a foothold in it. And point of fact, when they initially, Danny Garcia, who's um, Dwayne Johnson's ex-wife and also Henry Cavill's manager and the producer on Black Adam, 
went to Walter Hermada, who was then the head of DC, and said, we want to bring Henry Kett back for Black Adam. Walter said no, because he wanted, oh, really? to, fo- he wanted to focus on the Ta-Nehisi Coates Black Superman version. That's where he oh, wanted yeah, to sure. take it. So he wanted to segue over. Right, he right. wanted to segue to a new chapter. He wanted to move away from the Snyderverse and move into a new chapter. So Danny goes around Hamada and goes to Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi and says, I want to bring Henry back for Superman. They're like, yes, let's do it. So it's like they're wow. involved. There's no way they're not going to be involved. And now that Henry's been brought in and, you know, Dwayne and his team and Danny are all like, yeah, we did it. We can make this happen. We're going to be involved now. Well, all I got to say is, yeah, okay, you can be involved, but $70 million on a $150 million production budget, not including P&A, ain't going to cut it. Like that sounds, not- like sounds like a family fight over Thanksgiving meal. This is what the, it's oh, all that's exactly like what it's going to be like. It's, it's a bunch of people <laughs> at the table grabbing at the damn turkey, and you don't have a lot of turkey. So I, I just, I, I, I don't, I, again, I am fully willing to eat crow if I'm proven wrong, and this ends up bringing DC back to the heights that it probably deserves to, given their library and the, the level of characters they have to access. But I'm not convinced. But do you guys feel like people are just grabbing at anything right now? Like, there's no clear vision direction of where the entertainment space is going to go. What kind of movement's going to take place? What people are attaching themselves to besides Snapchat and Instagram videos? Like, do is there, or I guess TikTok. Sorry, I'm showing my age. I said Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, find, do you think that? Like, you know, Sean, what are you thinking? Do you feel like people are just only talking about the negative impacts and not really kind of looking at like big picture growth areas? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of, people feeling lost right now uh and but it's not even nothing new i think it's probably the past few years uh where this isn't all making a lot of sense where you know streaming was making a sense for netflix but everybody pivoted into it and then wall street you know came along this year and was like well we don't care as much about subscribers anymore how much you're making you're losing wait a second we just spent three or four years building these things <laughs> to give you numbers uh that don't make a lot of that we aren't making as much money as we used to um yeah, I, I think, you know, that is, uh, there's no vision. And we grew up in a, you know, in a business that doesn't exist anymore, which is not a new statement to say. Uh, and this is just the, the new reality that it will never settle. And that's where everybody needs to have a little bit of, I think, a little uh, comfort in the discomfort um, in the sense that the digital world is not going to be what the bedrock of three, you know, the three networks were and the legal protections that were there that kind of made those worlds exist for a long time that those rules went away. And, you know, so it just has to, yes, to answer your question, I think, yes, there is that your, your sense is exactly right, Tim, um, what someone does about it. <laughs> good, good luck. And now it's just being exacerbated by just the economy and everybody now in these earnings calls being like, we don't know what's going to happen in Q4. 23 doesn't look great. Uh, you know, so there's that un- unease about it. And, this week, you know, on CNBC it reported, you know, Warner Brothers is going to laugh at another thousand people before the end of the year. Uh, CNN was uh, put a memo, the CEO put a memo out about, you know, there's la- essentially saying layoffs are coming. So, you know, and this Twitter stuff we mentioned before, <laughs> you know, who knows what. So there's just all these things add up. It's like, yeah, of course you would be on edge because you don't, you know, as you collectively or individually don't know if your job is going to be there in a year and who, but that's the worst place I think we can all agree to be in, in, in the industry. So, yeah, I just don't know that there's a real like, when does it get better or when does it settle? I'm like, I don't, you know, it doesn't. Like, I, I don't know that it really yeah, does. I don't know if it's settled, but I just feel like, you know. When do we feel better about it? Well, I feel like <laughs> the, the, the subscriber race was at least something we could focus on. Oh, who was right. winning? Yeah, we're getting right. there, and now it's like right. we don't care. Subscribers is like, what, where's this? Wait, what are we? How are we gonna keep score anymore? We, yes, exactly. That's that's, how, well, I that's, didn't lose. You lost more than me. Is the only thing. Right, right. Doing. And that's, that's part of the that fun factor, Tim. I was talking about the business is less fun because the answer is a lot harder to 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 tell you. Um, and it also right. involves the Asia Pacific region now, and it all you know like these things that you people don't know about that take you know it's a little I love this stuff and I'm a big nerd about it, but uh, you know we talk about me. that Asia Pacific region. What what's that? Well, because that's where the growth is in subscriber numbers. Uh, the U.S. Yeah. is kind of flatlined, so we're gonna get a lot of numbers next uh, the first week of November. You know, Paramount Plus or HBO Max, but you know Netflix for the 2.4 million of growth it had over half of that was in Asia Pacific region. The U.S. was plus 100,000, which is really not much when you have a 73 
three million user base. So, yeah, you yeah. know, and I don't think the numbers that anybody else is going to be the competition has gotten to be such a case where, you know, uh, it's hard to find any growth. And you also have people, you know, Paramount Plus just did an offer for $25 for a year. So how do you grade that subscriber versus, you know, so even again, a subscriber count isn't even accurate because Netflix has been one price or, you know, has been, they don't discount and it's this, they raise prices over time and now they're doing advertising, but it's been this metric where you could judge it. Now you can't because everybody plays different games with this stuff. And, you know, Peacock's its own different universe and HBO Max, you know, does a deal for whatever it might be. You know, they're still selling it, I think, or sell for, you know, $80 for the year. So that's going to be over next month. And so uh, it, it's harder to, to say that, but there's the global region is getting much more important because that's where the growth is still is coming. But, but again, the, the, the caveat there, Tim, is that you can't charge as much for it. in a few countries over there, namely India and Indonesia, where you're charging, you know, pennies on the dollar for the services. So again, subscriber growth there isn't what subscriber growth this year. You know, I've already lost half the audience. It's like, yeah, it's just not as much fun to understand about like, oh, who won Thursday right. night on the Nielsen? It's like, okay, got it. By the way, and now I know why we talk about Tom and Giselle's divorce because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's something. Yeah, a little easier to focus to grasp. on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if, all, if our I, greatest I, breakthrough is commercials on Netflix, this is uh, not a <laughs> growth industry. <laughs> yeah. Of yeah. course, you're making Netflix commercials. Then this is a great moment to be a production company yeah. making Netflix commercials. Right. Yeah, and this is something too that I'm going to I'm going to talk about next week in the my wake up newsletter is that you know. All, and all the prices are being raised right now. So as the, as the recession goes on, no one knows what this price raise thing is going to be. Hulu just went up in October. ESPN went up, you know, three bucks a month in August. Disney Plus is essentially going up if you want to have the ad free, $3 in December. Apple TV Plus is now $2 more expensive. It's all happening at once. Netflix is the only person offering you a discount right now. And like that's actually not a bad proposition in that they're saying, hey, this thing that was 15 bucks, now seven if you want ads. You know, they're the only company reading the room in a certain sense uh, that I think I'm going to, you know, dive a little more into that next week just to explore that and what the landscape is. But it's also happening at this time where, you know, the money's coming in and they're raising prices and people, you know, I'm sure you, the three of us right here, I'm sure you've had this conversation with many friends about how much things cost. And now right. we know these price changes are coming. The public doesn't know. What's right. the reaction going to be in January? Once all this stuff goes into play about the streaming business and this great value you get, and they're like, why am I? Oh, great. These guys want more money now too. Great. You know what? I don't care or whatever, you know, who knows what the reaction might be and right. what the repercussions might be. So a lot more to, around the corner here, Tim. Yeah. I'm looking about. for, I mean, there's going to be when pressure's put on things evolve. So I, I'm looking forward to the evolution to take place to not know what it is always creates some anxiety but you know, it comes right. Cause it, this industry never dies, but it does kind of move on and evolve, which means there's new opportunities for creatives, new opportunities for builders and new opportunities for the message to get out. Um, it's just our job to find it. Sometimes we don't, we right. humans want it easier than harder, but um, yes, exactly. Really What's is, the simple uh, answer, but no, it's yeah. not. The problem isn't people don't like TV and movies anymore. Like that would be the bigger problem. Like, you know, the interest is uh, people just want to watch TikToks. I'm like, no, that hasn't been proven. I, you know, and even the movie business has come back. You know, the problem with the movie business is that, you know, they don't have enough product, not that people don't like going to the movies. Clearly, that's been proven several times over again post pandemic. So that would be more troubling, Tim, like, you know, of like, oh, nobody came back to the movie theater. That would have been, a you know, or it was half, you know, whatever it may, may be. It's not what it was. Yeah. It never was going to be. Movies weren't going up before the pandemic, but. It's still a solid business, as we said. Radio still, you know, things still exist. People still like these things, and that's the solace I would say is that people will always want to watch TV and movies, whether where they're watching it, how they, you know, that kind of thing is shifting. But that's the reassurance. It's not that like, oh, people don't like the product anymore. This isn't hard seltzer where it's like, oh no, people aren't buying this anymore. It was a fad. Oh no, if I put my whole fortune on hard seltzer, I'm in real trouble. You know, people still like our product, so that's good news. Yeah, yeah, they always they always want the product. Okay, uh, we gotta wrap this up. But if anybody's listening to this and wants to know the brains behind the wake up, um, <laughs> now you know where it comes from. There's a lot of thought that Sean has, and he's piling into these processes. It's much shorter in the newsletter, I, I promise. <laughs> yes, much more. It's a great, I, I, it's a great read. I can I can personally attest. It's a great morning read. Yeah, it's yeah. Awesome. 
I highly <laughs> Google, I, I recommend. Google has nothing on you when it comes to this knowledge. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, well, you're getting a snapshot into every evening I write. So I'm like, right, <laughs> wait a second, how do I make this in three paragraphs? Not even three sentences. So yeah, uh, yeah. I think I do a pretty good job. Uh, you yeah, do. You absolutely. High school uh, teachers, he'd be so proud of you. Five hundred words or less. <laughs> it's pretty much a big process. It is. Like... That's Tim. You're, you're not. You're, you laugh, but that's kind of like. When you have a word, a, a, like a character count, you know, I don't put that yeah. literally that hand, that handcuff on myself, but it is like that of like, okay, uh, lose this word, lose this whatever, this sentence, this thing. That, Invent that, a uh, new word that means right, these yeah, words. Can, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so yeah, uh, so you we, can check that out at the angler at the angler.com. You can uh, check out the wake up newsletter. Yeah, we love it. And uh, we appreciate you guys coming on and being part of our network too. We truly are fans of the Inkler and all you guys are doing over there. So yeah, thanks, Sean. Keep appreciate our appreciation it. To the team and keep up the good work. Cool, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. And, uh, always, always fun chatting. I, I didn't even say the word ARPU for you, Tim. I'll say that. I know. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> I said it once. You did. All right, keep doing it. All right. As long as somebody said it, then then we officially check the podcast. One so. our poop bingo today. That's like our poop bingo. That was all me. Yeah. Good job, Keith. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. You have a good one. Thanks, guys. <laughs>